Welcome to the next installment of the train because well it's been quite some time since the last installment and there's a reason for that. I've been traveling overseas for a week for a few weeks and then once I came back I was so busy that I somehow didn't get around to making new videos. While I was overseas I did travel on the occasional train or two but not as many as I had hoped. Well one of the reasons for that is that where I went there are not many trains but You'll get a few videos reflecting my experience overseas nevertheless. So let's start off with the first experience, which is trains on airports, or rather maybe they better called people movers, the little trains that move people between the different terminals. This is the automated fixed guideway transit system at the airport in San Francisco. This is the monorail at Newark Liberty Airport. It's also automated, which means it's driverless. It moves passengers between the terminals and also through the car parking areas and importantly connects to the Newark Liberty railway station. As you can see, these systems are normally quite contained and ha only handle a specific purpose of moving passengers between terminals as efficiently as possible. Well, this is one of the guided transit ways at Houston Intercontinental Airport on the security side. It's called the Skyway, linking the different terminals together. On the non-security side, we've got the subway in Houston Intercontinental Airport, which also links the um, terminals together. It's a little bit of a smaller system, as you can see, less capacity. These are all automated systems without a driver. And so to me, at least, they miss quite a, an aspect of the traditional railway with the, and the operating environment there. It's certainly a far cry from steam locomotives, the railway as it used to, to be still at the middle of the last century. I wonder whether in our modern age, there is often a trend towards this highly contained, highly sanitized, highly automated uh, environment. And well, especially now in the, with the lockdown and so on, the growth of online movements, I, well, I wonder whether in the church we sometimes haven't embraced too much um, video services and so on, where you don't actually have to meet people in real life. These automated guideways are doing their job, they're moving people, but I think something's missing in the overall picture. And I think as a society and as a church, uh, maybe we have to reflect on the importance of coming together in real life as real people.